My name is uh, Cyrus Highsmith. I live and work in Providence, Rhode Island, which is a very small city, kind of on the, between Boston and New York on the east coast of the United States. Uh, and it's, it's full of uh, artists and designers and musicians, thanks to uh, a lot of old factory buildings that used to be full of industry, but now they're empty, so we can all have our offices and studio space there. New York City is known as the city that never sleeps. Providence is known as the city that always sleeps. But in fact, it only seems that way to outsiders. In fact, we, we get up very early in the morning and we, we get our work done. In 2015, I founded my studio, Occupant, which includes Occupant Fonts and Occupant Press. Occupant Fonts is the typographic division. Many of my designs were developed while I was senior designer at Font Bureau. I worked there for many years. Uh, a lot of them were uh, drawn on commission. Uh, I worked a lot, especially for newspapers based in, in Latin America. And I also developed many designs on my own initiative. That's my preferred way to work lately. Currently, I publish my typefaces via Type Network, which is a new platform. It's kind of an international alliance of independent type designers. But just this year, Occupant Fonts was acquired by uh, Morisawa. So now I'm, I'm working for them. We opened a drawing office in Providence. There I am with my coworkers. These are type designer Jun Shin and type designer Jem Eskenazi. And our job is to produce new Latin fonts, not Japanese. Uh, but we're always looking for ways to make connections between Latin and, and Japanese. So uh, I'm very excited about the, the possibilities that are, that are opening up to us. Occupant Press, the other part of Occupant, publishes my books and illustrations and prints. This is the other side of, of what I do. I share a studio space with my wife, Anna, who makes ceramics. Our first book was Apple Bear Cat. It's an alphabet book for very young children. And sometimes I make posters for a very small group of clients uh, who don't give me much art direction. So when I see a chance to draw a giant ampersand with, with eyeballs, uh, I, can, I can take it. Lately, I'm experimenting with different ways of printing, including letterpress and silk screening and relief printing using styrofoam. And I really like to work with uh, ink on paper. Uh, I love the mechanics of, I love how the mechanics of printing uh, can change your image. It's not just the, the process, but there's something about the, the repetition. Um, I like what happens when there's more than one of, of something. Whoops, that's okay. Well, we'll go back. So, my mother is a, a painter, and, and that's who I learned to draw from. Uh, so it's been part of my life since uh, the very beginning. When I was a student in art school, uh, I studied painting and printmaking. And later, I, I switched to graphic design. And then finally, I got interested in making fonts. However, at this time, the resources and knowledge about type design were, were quite scarce, at least uh, where I was living. So I had help from, from teachers who introduced me to some professionals who very generously shared their knowledge. But there were many big gaps in my education that I had to fill myself. And I had to do this without the help of the, uh, the internet. That's how old I am. I filled these gaps not with uh, history or uh, calligraphy, but with uh, 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 drawing and, and, and painting. I filled it with my graphic background, um, with my experience as a, as a printmaker. And because I was left alone, 
I feel that I was able to develop my own very graphic or illustrative approach to type design. And I had a lot of space to experiment. And the results often were not very good, to be honest. Uh, but it's how I got started. And later I received more formal training at, at, at Font Bureau. So my mother, the painter, is still confused why I became a type designer. How could I give up color and paint and ink for just these little black and white drawings? And it's a good question. I myself was surprised that I found type design so, so fascinating. But here's the reason. I became a type designer because I love to draw. Drawing letters offered challenges and depth that I had not encountered in other media. So to me, drawing letters is a very pure form of, of drawing. And that's, that's why I like it so much. So I'll show you one of my, my recent typefaces. It's called a uh, gasket. That's a gasket. And here it, here it is. So gasket is a, a, a leak-proof sans serif with very simple, I like to think amiable, friendly letter forms. It began as just a single font, a single weight, made to accompany my illustrations for a children's book. Uh, later, I created additional weights and italics for its uh, broader release. So Gasket has some distinct letter forms in it. The capital I, for example. Do I have a pointer? Maybe? No? OK. Um, it has the, the, the crossbars on it. The uppercase Y in systems, you can see on the second line, is a little bit unusual. And I just, to be honest, I, 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 I like them that way. I thought it, the, you know, the I is a little bit more legible. The Y is a little faster to draw like that if you're writing. So it just kind of flows better with the other, the other designs, the other, the, other, the other forms. The uppercase was so much fun to draw that I decided to make small caps, too. So I drew the uppercase again. Uh, and they're relatively large small caps, though. So maybe not small caps, maybe kind of smaller caps, we can call them. Uh, and they're, 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 so they're, they're tall and they're designed for setting titles. And then I thought, I don't want the lowercase to feel left out. So I made then a single cased variation that features extra large lowercase forms. Um, so I don't know, if you, if you don't feel like using ascenders and descenders, well, then you can use the, the unicase version. And then finally, I added uncials uh, because, I don't know, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, these are very archaic cursive letter forms, and you don't usually find them in a, in a more contemporary sans serif series. Uh, but I, I kind of I I like how they, they, they work. Um, so why not? and perhaps my, my Irish ancestors would be, would be proud. So as I said, I drew Gasket for a children's book. Um, it was the uh, Little Bunny Trilogy. It's a book of, about a little bunny. It's three books long. Um, and I made this, this book series with my, with my young daughter. So instead of just focusing on the type, I was involved in, in all aspects of, of the project, from the writing, uh, and the drawing to the design and manufacture of the books themselves. Book one of the trilogy is called uh, Lost. The plot, as developed by me and my three-year-old, follows a little bunny that gets lost in the forest and meets a monster, and the monster turns out to be friendly, and the bunny is saved. It's a very short story. Um, in fact, I will read it to you. Once upon a time, there was a little bunny. She was lost in the forest. And she was scared and cold and hungry. Suddenly, along came a big furry monster. It was a friendly monster, 
it picked up the little bunny and took care of her. The end. Now, it's a, it's a short story. Um, so the, the first draft of the, of, the, of the book I'll show you, you know, was in black and white and it was, it was hand lettered. Um, and lettering seemed like a, a, a really natural choice uh, because the lettering was cute and friendly like the bunny and I, I thought it suited the content and went well with my illustrations. However, I noticed that my daughter and other small children related to the book differently than, than adults did. Whenever I read it out loud in a, in a, to an audience like this, there's usually a little bit of a, a chuckle at the end. Uh, because for adults, it's a, it's a funny story. But for children, this is a very serious story. The book's themes about getting lost and meeting monsters, these are existential concerns for, for, for a, a young audience. Uh, so, you know, I, I've had people tell me that they read this story to their, their, their children and they started to cry when, when the monster shows up. Um, so I thought to myself, you know, this, this, this cute lettering, this hand lettering, you know, it makes sense to me, but actually I think it has the, the wrong tone of voice. So I tried setting the text in, 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 in some of my existing typefaces uh, that were more serious. None of them were, were quite right either. This is Ibis, a serif design. And it definitely has a more serious tone, but it was too grown up. And then I tried uh, Scout, or this is Antenna, sorry, and uh, Scout, two sans serifs, but these were both too mechanical and they clashed with the, 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 the simple handmade character of the, the drawings. So I gave myself an assignment to draw a new typeface designed for a children's book uh, that's not childish. And that's how, that's how Gasket got its start. So as you can see, it has these kind of rounded endings. There aren't any sharp, sharp points on this, this typeface. And I, I like to joke that that makes it child safe, right? You can't, you can't poke yourself in the eye with this, this typeface. In fact, these, these features were, were inspired by letter forms seen on uh, some of my trips to, to Japan. The rounded sans serif style of, of lettering is, is everywhere in, in Japanese signage from, from hand painted signs to, to typefaces and it kind of seeped into my brain and then it, it leaked back out again into, into Gasket, a typeface for a book about a little lost bunny. So we published a, a small edition of the Little Bunny trilogy, and we sold it at a pop-up shop in, in Tokyo, which was kind of nice because it, it brought Gasket back to the place that, that helped in, inspire it. The illustrations in the, the bunny book are simple. I use big, flat shapes to tell the story. Technically, they're quite easy to make. Um, these are, you know, they're simple drawings. The challenging part is figuring out exactly what to draw and how to draw it. Every detail needs to work with the others to convey, to convey the right message. In a sense, it's similar to drawing a typeface. Letters are also easy to draw, technically. Uh, they're usually made of big, simple shapes. Even you know, a relatively complicated character like the lowercase g isn't really all that complicated compared to drawing the human figure or something. It's just big, simple, dumb shapes. The trick is knowing how to draw it so it fits together with the other parts of the typeface. So in my studio, the last steps in the process of illustrating a book and designing a typeface look very similar in this sense. I make a lot of proofs and I spread them out on the floor and I, uh, you know, I, I need to see the relationships of everything at once. So, so I, can, I can see what's going on and I can look for the connections and, and the patterns. 
I often have to stand on a chair so I can, I can look down and, and, and see the big picture. It's a process of, of zooming in and, and zooming out and making sure that everything fits together and everything looks like it's supposed to look like. So those were proofs from a typeface. This is proofs from uh, another children's book I made called Ari Inu Usagi. This is a hiragana primer for five-year-olds. Um, so hiragana is the part of the Japanese writing system where that the, the children typically learn how to read first. So this is for uh, young children. Um, and uh, this is my, I did the drawings, and then this is my lettering also. Uh, so I don't speak Japanese, um, but thanks to projects like this, I'm, I'm slowly learning it. And when I say slowly, I mean very slowly. Um, so to do this lettering, I had to study writing manuals and uh, did some exercises to learn the correct stroke order and direction. You know, at the time, my, my young daughter was in kindergarten, and she thought it was quite funny that I was doing the same kind of writing exercises as she and her classmates. So I, I did this lettering myself because I, I think it's important for there to be a strong visual connection between the drawings and the words. And I'm told the, the lettering reads, reads well. This is thanks to input from my, my colleagues at Morisawa. And I'm told it looks good too. Uh, but let's be honest, this is childish, cartoonish lettering. Its charm mostly comes from not knowing what I'm, I'm, I'm doing. You know, I, I've tried some, some more typographic forms in, in uh, these are katakana lettering, but also in Japanese, um, and these are not so charming. Uh, so this is my typeface gasket for my old business card, and I, I drew my name in kana in, in, in Japanese. And, you know, these comments might not seem uh, like, like much, but it's really the equivalent of pointing out mistakes like I drew the S upside down and things aren't aligning on baselines correctly. These are very basic comments that I got from my, my coworkers. And, and honestly, I, I think they were being polite. Um, the good news is that these cards were print on demand, uh, so I didn't make so many of them. So, but this is, you know, this is really interesting, and this is a, a topic that, that a lot of people are thinking about. You know, what is the effect of reading and writing on type design? I don't, I don't know what it is, but, but surely they do have an effect. And you can't just show up and expect your experience with one writing system to apply to another. So maybe the question to ask ourselves is, is how do we use that to, to our advantage as opportunity for collaboration of all sorts as well as, as well as education? But either way, you know, it's still about drawing shapes, big flat shapes. You know, Jerry Leonidas suggested we won't have jobs if we, if we only focus on that. And yeah, he probably has a point. What's going on? There we go. Type design. You know, I do type design and I do illustration. And I also teach a little bit and I try to write. I'm a printmaker. Like many creative people, like many of you, I do a lot of different things. In fact, I would find it quite difficult if I had to pick just one. And I think it would make me less of a, an artist. These different, different disciplines feed each other. I think that I'm a better type designer because I also draw rabbits. And I think I can draw rabbits better thanks to what I've learned drawing letters. You know, I enjoy uh, thinking about drawing, and I enjoy talking about drawing. But the thing I enjoy most is, is actually just drawing. So uh, 
I'm done now. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and I will be over there with my, my sketchbook. Okay. Thank you.